We often gauge the value of our lives based upon the number of opportunities or open doors that we receive. However, do we ever pause and reflect upon how many blessings we receive by the number of doors that God closes that were set up to trap and destroy us? Hi, my name is Alicia, and today we're discussing how closed doors are still answered prayers. If this sounds like something you're interested in, please keep watching. <laughs> last week because of social media we have the ability to compare and contrast our lives with the lives of others on almost a daily basis as we scroll we can see endless opportunities and blessings received by others a way of doors that god has opened for them and when our opportunities don't seem to match what we see god doing in the lives of others we sometimes feel as though we may be doing something wrong or even worse that god doesn't really care about us we can wonder why it appears as though god is always telling us no and he's always telling others yes However, mature believers realize and understand that not every door that opens is of God and not every door that closes is of the devil. And while it can feel as though God is working against us, he is most certainly not. And if we are patient, the God who designed our being will open the doors that he specifically designed for us to walk through. And what's beautiful about this is that every single no that you've ever received in your life is only preparing you for the yes that God has for you. Sometimes the greater the weight, the greater the weight of the door. In a dream, I stood behind this beautiful mahogany door that was further up than my eyes could see. The outside of this door had these deep circular cuts. The average eye would have perceived these cuts to be random and unnecessary, but I saw them as beautiful carvings skillfully etched in the door. In the dream, I knew that the unique cuts matched the unique trials and the unique difficulties that I was going through. They had matched the cutting that I endured for growth purposes. I mentioned that the cuts in the door were circular. In the word of God, the circle is another word for a compass. A compass is a tool used to determine direction. When we allow God to determine our direction, he does not allow us to walk through every random door or accept every random opportunity because they're not worth our time. I now look at every door and every opportunity with a keen eye. And if it doesn't match everything God has promised and what I have gone through, I know that the door is not designed for me to walk through. A seller of a home in the Los Angeles area had mentioned that the door for one of the homes that he built cost $75,000 alone. He admitted that it was a painful check to write, but it was necessary because of the type of home that it protected. There is a uniquely designed door with your name etched into it. The door matches the pain that you have endured. And you don't have to worry about missing out because it's inaccessible to anybody else. Your cut is the key that unlocks it. And no one else can cut a key to it. You paid a price that not many people were willing to. In a dream, I saw a woman who is very small in comparison to the very large golden door that was opening in front of her. And as it was opening, I noticed that it took a while because of the weight of the door. Some doors take longer to open because of the weight of the blessing that's behind the door. And when we look around ourselves and compare our lives to others, and we see this world doing a whole lot of different things and in many areas, it seems this way because we don't necessarily understand quality. Children value multiple dollar items because they don't know any better. They don't understand quality and they often think that more is better. They think that more is more. But mature adults understand and realize the value of quality. It takes longer to produce excellence and we have to be mature to understand this. Sometimes what God has for us is so weighty that he can't release it to us until we're mature enough to handle it. In the first dream, I mentioned that the door that I stood in front of was made of mahogany wood. When I researched mahogany wood, I found that it was known for its stability, its resilience, its durability. Durability represents staying power and stability represents maturity. I also found that mahogany wood maintained its integrity. Some of us have not walked through certain doors because they will require a certain level of maturity, stability, integrity, and resilience to have the staying power needed to remain in position. Therefore, we should never be anxious wondering what's taking God so long. James 4, 3 says, you ask God for something and do not receive it because you ask with the wrong motives out of selfishness or with an unrighteous agenda so that when you get what you want, you may spend it on your desires. The King James Version of this scripture says that we don't have what we want because we act amiss. Amiss comes from the Greek word kekos, 
This means badly, physically, or morally. It means that which is evil in a sense of disaster. If we walk through certain doors prematurely, it will definitely lead to disaster. And I know that this can be easier said than done because I can remember when God gave me a dream 16 years ago. I felt the best way to make that known was to walk across stages and to be seen by people. I became overly obsessed with making that known. I became overly obsessed with pushing doors open. So my motives weren't right. My heart wasn't right because I did not understand that some things that God blesses us with and some gifts that God gives and some opportunities that God opens before us are not for us and for us to be a blessing to others. Simply put, I was asking amiss. I was asking badly. I was asking for myself and I was immature. God saved me during that time by telling me no, because if he had prematurely allowed me to walk through certain doors and be placed on certain platforms, those very platforms that were set out to bless others would have crushed me. Your character must always match your stage. As he processed that immaturity out of me, I realized that what he had called me to do was not a fashion show, but it was a death walk. And the doors that he did open would cause me to die to myself. 16, 1a verses 6 through 7 says, Now Paul traveled to Derb and also to Lystra. A disciple named Timothy was there. Now they passed through the, the territory for Phrygia and Galatia after being forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in the west coast province of Asia Minor. And after they came to Mysia, they tried to enter into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. As the Apostle Paul and Timothy were on their mission, along their journey, churches were being established in the faith. They were making progress. God was opening doors before them. The Word of God says that their numbers increased daily. However, when they approached certain parts in the northern and western parts of Asia, God stopped them in their tracks. The door was closed. And what's interesting about this text is that you won't find where the Apostle Paul began to complain and to cry out to God about why that door was closed. Why he told them no and why they weren't allowed to enter into that territory. They did not allow the closed door to allow them to doubt the call of God on their lives. How many times have we complained to God about a door that he closed? An opportunity he didn't allow, a perceived blessing that we did not receive. And instead of moving forward, we get stuck at a door that God never intends to open. Maturity says that when God directs us elsewhere, then elsewhere is where we need to be. And just because we're on a mission and we're doing the right thing and we're gaining momentum does not mean that we're called to be everywhere. When God created you, he created your whole life. He mapped out your whole existence. He orders our steps, meaning that some doors were not meant for us to walk through. Some perceived blessings we don't need. Some territories we don't need to enter. Acts 16 verses 8 through 10 says, So passing by Mysia, they went into Troas. Then a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man from the Roman province of Macedonia was standing and pleading with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when he had seen the vision, we, including Luke, tried to go into Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So the scripture says that after God closed the door, that Apostle Paul and Timothy, they continued on. And then he gets a vision from a Macedonian asking him to come into Macedonia to help them. The word into used comes from the Greek word ice, which means far more exceeding for intent purpose. So had the Apostle Paul tried to force the door open that God had closed, then he would never have received the vision to go to the place where God intended for him to be. He would have never walked in the far more exceeding intended purpose that God had for him elsewhere. Had he become stuck at a door that was closed, what would have become of those people that God showed him in that vision? Our no from God is sometimes someone else's answered prayer. We can expect no's along our journey with God. This is because we believe in our hearts that we know what we should be doing, but it is God who has the actual blueprint. He has the design and it's always exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever imagine for ourselves. No's are not to dissuade us from our dreams or what God has ordained for us to do, but to divinely navigate us along the right path so that we don't end up in beautiful traps. In a dream, I was driving around in circles. I stopped right at a deep ditch or a pit that I almost drove into. In this ditch were workers or excavators who were looking up and said that you're lucky because another woman just drove into this same ditch. After that, I saw myself sitting in this tall tree that extended towards the heavens. This dream was not hard to interpret because it was during the time when I was dating or seeing this guy who I already knew was not the right person for me. But I had a hard time letting go. 
So in this dream, driving around in circles represents a state of confusion. It also represented going nowhere. In contrast to the circle that's in the word of God as being a compass, I was serving as my own guide and the result was confusion. In this dream, I stopped my car right before driving into this ditch which some other lady unfortunately drove into and I ended up in a tall tree which represents the tree of life or which represents Jesus. Sometime later, I realized that letting go of that situation was one of the best decisions of my life because it was going nowhere. But suppose I would have forced my way through that door, forced my way into that situation. Where would I be today and who would I be today? I know for a fact that I would not be here. Revelation 3 7 says, These are the words of the Holy One, the true one, he who has the key to the house of David, he who opens doors and no one will be able to shut, and he who shuts and no one opens. Sometimes we forget that the same God who opens a door that no man can close is the same God who closes a door that no man can open. Both of those portions of scriptures apply to our lives. This means that closed doors are still answered prayers. And it's for that reason that I have learned to thank God not only for the yeses, but also for the noes. I thank God not only for what I am, but for what I am not. I thank God not only for where I am, but where I am not. I not only thank God for those people who are in my life, I thank him for the people who are not in my life. I have learned to thank God for every single no because I know that they are leading me to the yes that belongs to me. In a dream, I simply saw seven no's and then up underneath those no's, I saw seven yeses. In the word of God, the number seven represents a sense of completeness or perfection. If we are patient with God, he will perfect all those things that are concerning us. Every no that's in our lives will be followed up with the appropriate yes. As God told the apostle Paul, no, his feet were being guided to bring the gospel to those who needed it. Along the way, many were saved, delivered, and set free. And if it were not for the doors that were shut in his face, those people would not have been saved, delivered, and set free. Who is not being set free because we're standing at doors that don't belong to us? I urge you today to keep walking and trusting and believing God as he divinely orchestrates your life and leads you to your yes. Father, thank you for every single no, every single closed door, every single opportunity that did not go according to our plans because we know that you have the divine plan. You have mapped out all of our days. You are ordering our steps into purpose. Lord, we release our wills for your will today. We rely on your voice to guide us. Lead us, dear Lord, to the yes that you etched for us before the foundations of this earth. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. I thank you so much for being here today. I pray this week that God not only opens doors for you, but he closes the right doors as well. And as always, bye. Thanks for watching.